Nintendo ended up releasing Animal Crossing New Horizons at a pretty unfortunate time, which is no understatement. On one hand, more people than ever before were at home and playing video games, purchasing new consoles and games they would have never tried, which was a huge benefit to the game and Nintendo. On the other hand, New Horizons was missing a lot of content, and hence that lack of playability that would have been needed given we were basically all playing it 24-7 meant that the game probably got scrutinised a lot more than it would have been if it was played each day for a few hours alongside usual schedules. Now this timing isn't really Nintendo's fault, they can't see the future, they aren't Katrina, but it had a big impact on the game nonetheless. For a lot of us, all this time spent really helped us through a difficult time, but it's still fair to look back and see that yeah, we pretty quickly ran out of things to do. The updates that Nintendo would release throughout 2020 helped with this a lot, providing us with new content to play around with every few months, and this model would have worked even better without the other circumstances. It still didn't completely alleviate the lack of content New Horizons had, but it was still really exciting to see what updates would come and what new content we would have to look forward to. I was spending every waking moment of every day waiting for the next update. It was my life. However, it got to a point where updates had slowed down. The real world was starting to open up and less and less people were playing the game. I think the lack of updates throughout the summer of 2021 really contributed to this the most, as a lot of people really felt like they had done all they could do and seen all they needed to at that point. But Nintendo decided to blow our socks off in November 2021 by releasing their biggest update by far, version 2.0. Alongside it came the first and only DLC for the game, Happy in Paradise. It's no lie to say that this was a massive update, and at the time of the release, most people were extremely happy with what Nintendo was offering, especially as expectations were fairly low at that point. I remember when the update dropped slightly early and rushing on to see what had changed around my island, going to see Brewster for the first time and then desperately hunting for the most beautiful item in the game, which of course is Froggy Chair. But despite all this new content and additions, about two months later it seemed like once again most players were starting to move on and were losing interest in the game. This was only increased by the fact that Nintendo would confirm that version 2.0 would be the last update the game would receive. Of course, no game goes on forever, and it would have been unrealistic for us to expect this game to keep going, but given that this game is one of the best selling of all time, and Nintendo's biggest on the Switch, why stop just over a year into the game's lifespan? We'll never know Nintendo's exact reasoning for this, but it was definitely disappointing. Nintendo's mistake wasn't necessarily stopping support for the game, this would have happened eventually no matter what. But honestly, I really don't think that 2.0 needed to be the end, and the way Nintendo handled this particular update could have been a big mistake on their part. Remember what I said earlier about players being so excited about the prospect of new updates, waiting anxiously for the next release? Well, when Nintendo packed everything into one huge update and then immediately confirmed that this was it, they effectively killed that excitement before it could even really get started. Although I like the idea of such a big update, I honestly think Nintendo could have split this update apart, like they did with previous updates. Throughout 2020 and 2021, the updates were seasonally focused and introduced new content relevant what was going on. Although I'm not a fan of drip feeding content in general, some of these early updates were honestly pretty substantial. Yes, some of this update content should have been in the game since the start, but that's a topic for another video. Perhaps rather than giving us all of this content in one go, Nintendo could have paced it out throughout 2022, giving them more time to add even more additions. Perhaps not huge things, but improvements to the existing features that they had released with this update. So, maybe instead of everything we got with the 2.0 update, in November 2021 when it released, we could have seen Brewster, the DLC and new items, maybe this time with the ability to actually work at the roost like we could in New Leaf. Then, later in spring 2022, we could have seen even more items introduced, some of the quality of life features we saw, and then gyroids as the bigger feature, with extra improvements that we didn't see in this current timeline. Then summer would have been the perfect opportunity to introduce Capen and Mystery Islands. This whole feature feels a little bit lackluster in New Horizons, so this summer update could have expanded upon it more. You get the picture anyways. I guess Nintendo was done with the game at this point, and that's why they decided to release all of this at once, but it would have been great if they continued working on updates and perhaps allowed the new major features to shine on their own throughout 2022, greatly expanded than what we ended up getting with 2.0. Surely this would have driven even more sales to the game and especially to their new DLC too, which I'm sure they put a lot of effort into. 
Nintendo is a business after all, so I don't know why they would want to lose out on even more sales for this game when the next Animal Crossing project could be years and years away. Of course, waiting for all of these updates being split apart would have been hard, but with a roadmap plan from Nintendo during the Animal Crossing Direct, there would have been more excitement from players than not, I feel. Of course, I know not everyone likes the idea of updates being spread apart like this, which I totally understand, but there's no denying that it would have kept the game alive for longer, and perhaps with more time to expand these features and content, the longevity of the game would have been improved too. To be clear, I don't think this idea works as well if it was all just spread apart in its current form with no extra additions or expansions, but it's still worth a thought. But let me know what your thoughts are down in the comments section below. Do you think this plan was perfect on Nintendo's part, or perhaps could they have done it differently like I described here? I'd love to hear what you have to say. If you made it to the end of the video, be sure to comment Bob's Gang down below so I know you did. If you enjoyed, be sure to leave a like, and if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe and turn on channel notifications for more content.